Indie Mogul. This week on Indie News. Hello? Oh, I Indie Mogulers. Hey, uh, it's time for Indie News. It's Monday. Um, crap. I am really busy working on the film right now. Yeah, my neighbor is mowing his lawn. This is a terrible time. Uh, I have jury duty tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't have time to write a script. So how about today, I just go off book. I'll explain what's going on with the film right now, uh, some of the licensing that I'm trying to acquire to get footage for the film and what that costs. And we'll talk about this crazy rig. Let me start with this. I am, you may recall an episode I did earlier in the summer about writing with Sriracha over a blue screen. Blue screen because there's green on the Sriracha bottle and I can't key out the green, I have to key out blue. Uh, but I'm using that to create some graphics for the film. Last night I had a professional handwriter come over and do some, the lower third graphics, everyone's name. I have 15 names that need to be featured in the film, you know, on the screen. So she came and wrote them in Sriracha. I can key out the blue and they look great. One of the ways that I had to make it look, get the right look is first making sure there's plenty of light and plenty of soft light. Like, I don't know if you can see, but there's no shadows on this blue. I mean, very light shadows, but light shadows are easy to, to key out. Hard shadows would be a problem. So having plenty of light is, is important. I also put up this black sheet here to help block the reflections of like this light up on the ceiling because the camera pointing down here off this plastic, which I have elevated off the blue so that it doesn't cast shadows below. Um, pointing off of that, reflecting off that, you would see the, the light up there because it contrasts against the white ceiling. But if I block that out, it, it's okay. And generally I found that if I shot straight down onto the plastic, it just, it didn't work because it would, the camera was fine. I could cover up the camera and you wouldn't see it, but you'd always see the person writing you'd see like their face because the light is hitting my face so it's gonna show up in the reflection so i found if i just tilted the camera just a little bit that way i got rid of it uh, and you can't really tell that it's at an angle to mount this thing i'm using just a couple of light stands and this is actually like a stand for my green screen but i'm just using this uh, clamp that i have that has a, a quarter inch uh, screw on the bottom i put a little ball head tripod mount here and Got the camera there. It's actually upside down, but I can flip it in post. And then I'm using a remote. I have a remote shutter for my camera so that I'm not shaking the camera a bunch every time I need to fire up a shot. So let me show you what some of these graphics look like um, from the, this chroma key. Uh, so here's some Sriracha handwriting, just like a basic title. Uh, that right now it's on black, but because I keyed out the blue, I can really put it on anything. So we have, like, let's see, where's a name? Here's a name. Um, here's what a name could look like. I, I can still move it around. I can resize it. That's the beauty of keying out the background. I can do whatever I want to it. I can distort it if I have to. So I have 15 of those that I'm, I'm placing around the film right now. And I kind of had to wait till this point because the film is almost done, but I kind of had to wait till the film was almost done to even know what are the graphics that I need to get. So now I know these are the 15 people that need to be named in the film. And today I'm gonna also get some other designs, you know, spray some sriracha into a corner, some of the, some of the effects that I wanna do uh, in the film. And one of the reasons I have to have the film done this week is because film festival deadlines are coming up. The one I really wanna hit is South by Southwest in Austin, Texas in March. And their deadline, their final deadline is this Thursday. Luckily, they will accept rough cuts. I mean, I, I wanna have this as far along as possible. I'm hoping to have the film done, done. Um, I mean, not done, done, but you know, it's complete, it's watchable, but I still need to do a sound mix and color correction. That's what I'm hoping to have for them on Thursday. And then there's also a more local festival in Columbia, Missouri called the True False Film Festival, and they do documentaries. And that's, their deadline is this Wednesday. So I'm hoping I can hit that one too. You know, it's only $40 to enter that festival. Even South by Southwest, I, I think for a short film, it's not that much. It's like $40 or $60. So I feel like I'd be kicking myself if I didn't enter a lot of these festivals, uh, even if the thing I send, the True False Festival on Wednesday, is not like completely there yet. I can always let them know. I'll put a graphic at the front of the film that says, you know, we're close. 
and hopefully they'll let you, if they're, if they like what they see, they understand that you're going to work on the film and correct some of these things before it premieres at the festival. The South by Southwest Film Festival, and a lot of the other ones too, there's several things that they need from me. Let me look them up. They need um, a director's bio from me, which is 350 characters. So I'd love for you guys to help me out with that. If you have any ideas in the comments, what would you say about me? I feel weird writing a biography of myself, a short bio. What do they need to know about me? Uh, I have to write a 700 character synopsis of the film and a log line, a 250 character log line. So the synopsis is longer. It's what the film is about. Uh, the log line is also, you know, just a couple sentences. Like, how would you explain in two sentences what your film is? Which you kind of need to have anyway. They call it an elevator speech a lot. Like, let's say you were in an elevator with a movie producer and they were like, if for some reason you're talking to them about this short film you're making, you need to be able to explain in two sentences probably what it is to, to c continue that conversation. So I need to put those together. Um, and then I, there's also some other like credits that I need to submit. Uh, but otherwise it's just the film and those few sentences that I need to get to them on Thursday. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to do with the film is knowing that, you know, after I go to festivals or even before I go to festivals, maybe a distributor will pick it up. Maybe I can get this thing on Netflix or something. But I assume that anyone who wants to pick up the film, they're gonna need to make sure that I have all the like licenses in order to, you know, prove that I own everything that's in the film. Fortunately, most of the film I shot myself. I got releases every time I interviewed people, so that's cool. But there are some things like photos and video and music that I've asked people for. And it's good to have, you know, an email trail with these people. They say, yeah, sure, you can use it. But then I also have them signing releases to say, yeah, it's cool for you to use our stuff. So that's good. I have that. But then, like, there is some footage of the, like, some historical news footage that I found. Here, I'll pull this up. And actually, one way, right now there's like 2,000 things in my timeline. It's really hard for me to find, like get to the right points. Final Cut has a little thing in the corner, a little like list icon you can click on, and you can just search through all your stuff. So let me search Vietnam, which will like get me to the part of the film where David Tran is talking about Vietnam. There I am. And right next to it, I have some footage. Here's some footage of, this is actually the day that David Tran, pretty much the main character in the film, arrives in Hong Kong on this ship from Vietnam called the Hoi Phong. And here's some more footage of it. They actually kind of arrived illegally. The British officials in Hong Kong showed up. I think you'll see it in a second. The, uh, this is their ship. And they tell them, like, you need to get out of here, essentially. So this is great footage. I don't know why the news arrived like right away. This was a, a news story for about a month just because the ship kind of sat in the waters. Uh, these, these refugees just waiting to, to land and not really being allowed to do that. So this is really cool footage. And I think it's important to include in the film because it's, it's part of the story. It kind of proves as a filmmaker that I've done the research. I found this thing. The problem is it's real expensive. I don't know if you can imagine how expensive it is to just license news footage, archival footage. This is from 1978. I found there are several sources you can look at. Um, I, first, I started looking at AP Archive, the Associated Press. They have an archive of footage you can look through online. Uh, people like NBC Universal has an archive. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I found this one website called ITN, uh, itnsource.com. And I found that they had a lot of stuff, whereas like AP made it real easy for me to look through the stuff. I could actually watch it. A lot of it was already digitized. You know, this stuff is film. ITN Source, not, I don't think any of their stuff, at least the stuff I was looking for from 1978, none of it was digitized yet, but they had pretty good descriptions of everything. So I could tell like, I think that's a shot I want to look at, or this is a clip I want to look at. So they digitized a bunch of stuff for me, sent me these previews, which I'm looking at now. And now it's time for me to get the master file that doesn't have a watermark on it, that you know is higher res that I'm allowed to use because I've paid for the license. But it's gonna cost me, for 30 seconds of video, $1,400, $1,456 is how many dollars uh, this is gonna cost me. It's like $41 per second plus a mastering fee. $41 per second gets me a year of festivals, film festivals all around the world, and it gets me online use forever, which is good, because that's what I need. I need to be able to give this to my Kickstarter backers, put it online, 
maybe put it on Netflix, that, that would include that too. So this is the license I need, but man, $1,400. That, for the amount of money I've spent on the film so far, I've spent about $13,000. Most of that is travel, you know, I don't have any crazy expenses besides just that I had to go tell this story. Uh, so $1,400 is like more than 10% of the budget I've spent so far, but it's only gonna be like 2% of the film, 30 seconds out of 30 minutes. So it's hard for me to warrant that, but it really is, I think it's worth it. I tried to negotiate with these people, but I'm not buying very much from them. So I think, you know, they were just kind of like, nope. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I kind of checked with AP, kind of tried to no negotiate with them. It seemed like no one was really willing to budge on their footage. I guess, you know, they know they have the footage, they know that you need it. Um, but in the end, I kind of liked ITN Source. They, they were the most responsive. Like the people at NBC, just stop talking to me for some reason. I don't know why. I just can't, I can't even find the footage anymore that they apparently have. AP Archive, uh, they were pretty good. They're a little bit slow to respond sometimes. And the footage I got from them was pretty shaky, didn't have great sound. ITN Source has, seems to have pretty good uh, customer service people. They're based in London. So I was pretty happy with that experience. One other thing that's going on in this like last week, besides the fact that I'm just madly trying to edit and, and get the story, you know, get everything good. I have great stuff I want to share, but it just needs to be really polished. We were going through the credits. The, the same people that are helping me with the, uh, with the handwriting are doing my credits for me. And the credits look beautiful. Here, let me, uh, I'll jump to the end. Um, in Final Cut, you can do function right, and it jumps all the way to the end of the film. Um, they designed these beautiful credits for me. Let me jump to the very beginning of them. I really love what they've done. And they figured out how to get all 1,300 backer names in there really well. Um, we kind of mix them in with the rest of the credits. But you probably can't see it from here. I'm watching this, and this is a low res sample, but it's kind of jerking a little bit as it goes. It's kind of strobing. And that's that's a, it's a motion blur issue. There's no motion blur right now. It's kind of a... Last week, on last week's show, I talked about how to use an ND filter to get more motion blur so you stop that strobing effect. I mean, it's something you can deal with in regular video footage. It's something called shutter angle. And if you're not familiar with it, I have several uh, videos about it that you can check out. But right here, I mean, anytime you do motion graphics, any, anytime anything moves on screen, it probably should have a little bit of motion blur because that's what our eyes are used to. Just the fact that the shutter on a camera opens up for a certain part of a frame, and if something's moving during that part of, that the shutter's open during that frame, it needs to be a little bit blurry. And these aren't. It's great because everything in the credits are super legible. Like right now we can read all the names. So we need to find that happy medium where everything's still legible, but there needs to be just a little bit of blur. So it kind of tricks the eye so you don't feel like it's going that, 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 that as it moves, that it's actually just scrolling. I've never really done rolling credits like like on this scale for a film. As some software like Final Cut Pro 10 does usually add motion blur automatically when you do uh, movement. And somehow this just missed out on it. This was in After Effects. So we just need to make sure we go back and do it. But I guess just something I never really thought about, but I'd have to go look. I assume every, every time you roll credits that you are, you need to blur it a little bit. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I should get back to work on this film. Man, I don't have a whole lot of time left. But one thing you should check out today is our friends over at Online Video Contests. Last week, I shared the fact that they are giving away $1,000 if they can reach 1,000 new subscribers this month. I think that's a really cool goal to try to achieve. And then to give something back. They're actually halfway there. They've gotten 500 subscribers in one week. So it looks like they're gonna do it this month. But the trick is, the only people that are eligible for the money are the people who actually enter the contest on onlinevideocontest.com. So they are gonna get there, I think. So make sure you keep sending subscribers their way, but also make sure that you sign up. Here, just check out this video. I'll link to it right here. It shows you how you can sign up on the website. All you have to do is just be a member of the website, just click favorite on this, uh, on this contest, and that's how they know who to draw the names from to give away $1,000. They'll actually give away more money if they get even more subscribers. So check it out. You could uh, earn some money from B&H and, and buy some cool camera gear. Well, I'll talk to you later.